Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 21 of our No Holds Barred Security Podcast, Insecurity. Once again, we're joined by Tom Webster, and today we just we just have a general mishmash of news articles that we think are important and should be brought to your attention. So a lot going on. So let's ask first, Tom. Did, did you ever use WhatsApp? I didn't. I didn't actually. Um, it just I I usually stick to. Uh, Google Hangouts or Threema, and uh, as we all know, Google Hangouts probably you shouldn't think of as NSA secure or really secure to uh, to Google or anyone who subpoenas Google. And Threema, we know is secure. We know that Threema and the company behind it takes security very seriously, and they've built their app in the proper way. Well, are you so? I also have never used WhatsApp. I think I've downloaded it. I've played with it. It was kind of a shock to me that uh, that Facebook would spend all this money to buy it, especially when they bought Beluga a few years ago. And it, I hands down think for just generic uh, communication where there's no uh, thing of privacy or anything else, I think Facebook Facebook Messenger is where it's at. But they bought this. Apparently, it's bigger in the rest of the world, not in the U.S. And then all of a sudden, everyone got crazed and left. Not left, but this company Telegram became came to the forefront of secure messaging apps. So yeah. And yeah is what's up, and that's the problem. <laughs> it's it's they they touted themselves, and I saw a whole slew of all the people in my feed like, we're all moving to Telegram. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's secure. And every time I saw a post, I kept on saying, why not Threema? It's a little money, but why not Threema? Mm -hmm. And before we even get into Telegram and what's wrong with it or what they did right or whatever it is, I have. I also want to agree with you that Hangouts is is very good as far as a messaging platform. I still like, uh, and it's coming up, Facebook I think is the best, and my criteria for this is it's cross-platform, which, which both of them are, even Facebook is more so on Windows Phone and probably BlackBerry where Google Hangouts is not, but it works on your computer, so you don't get the notifications twice. If you're sitting at your desk, you get the notifications with Threema or with WhatsApp or with GroupMe or any of these other services, Telegram included, you don't get the on-the-computer aspect of it, which means that you have to hold a phone or a tablet near you at all times, which I sometimes much rather type on a keyboard. Absolutely, and that's... One of the main reasons I use Hangouts is I can keep my conversations in, in one place. I really wish, and it's really hard to do, but I wish Threema had you know, a, a component for the desktop. Um, but unfortunately, they're stuck on mobile right now, and I understand why. It's because they can control the platform easier than they can a general PC. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. In the, by meantime, the way, oh, go ahead. In the meantime, there's, uh, if, if you use any of the uh, open source protocols, anything like, I know Google, for the time being, you can hook uh, an open source program called Pigeon into Google, and you can use something like OTR to make that completely secure. So you can do key exchanges with your friends, and you can send encrypted messages over these services and have them be completely secure through OTR. So that's another option. Well, again, it's still using... You want... A standalone thing. I mean, we, we keep on touting you want to make it easy and to down. I mean, Pigeon is not hard to download, but I don't know. I live mainly in Google Plus and in Gmail, so the chats are right there, and I can just move to my Chromebook, which, by the way, you can't download Pigeon for. And I just like to move across these devices. That, but that's me. I mean, other people, people, my students. My other friends, they live on text messages. That's it. That's the holy grail. They don't use the computer. They don't use Facebook Messenger. They just live on text messages. And, But, again, the point is everyone, the whole story here is everyone all of a sudden started migrating to Telegram where they said, uh, we're secure. The problem is we're reading what their security detail is, and, unfortunately, we don't agree with them, not even in the least. Yeah. They, uh, they are guilty of mistake number one. 
when it comes to anything security related. If you are building an application, if you are trying to make things secure, and you think, huh, what can I do to make this secure? What can I do to possibly keep this safe from the NSA or other people who are trying to hack it? You know, I'm not going to use one of those open source libraries. A lot of people know how those work. No, instead, I'm going to write my own encryption. No, no, don't. Please don't. These guys are math PhD guys, and they got it wrong because being really good at math doesn't mean you're really good at cryptography. They're two related fields, but they're two very separate fields, and you've got to have a whole lot of experience in security and cryptography to come up with a good cipher. More importantly, when you come up with good encryption, what you do is you put it out in the open. You say, guys, here's our protocol general world and public here's what we came up with break it please try to break it because if you can't if we can be rest assured that it's very secure and everyone puts trust in it and everyone says yeah no this is a great great encryption method then we can start putting it into our apps unfortunately the guys behind this program said oh we're just gonna write it throw it in it'll be totally secure not in the least it was was it okay uh, not really. Not even that good. So within hours of publishing the application, security holes were found everywhere. In the encryption protocol they built, in the way they were handling secret keys, even in their server backend where you're getting your messages, everything had issues with it. Well, I wanted to start off by saying, yes, you never want to build it. And I want to say the current, what's... I forgot the name of the current U.S. <coughs> default security. Is it's not SHA one. It's Bruce yeah. Schneier's thing. AES. AES two fifty six. AES or uh, Bruce Schneier did. Um, and I and just blanked on the name. Yeah. Well, um, it, the, the point is, while you think of it, it's it's been around since the mid nineties. Like the PGP encryption, when we talk about encrypting email, it's been around since forever. And it's been hacked and tested and everything. And currently, the only way right now to do it is a brute force attack. There's no way around it. And when people create their own encryption, we, we get problems. Blowfish. And blowfish, yeah. And we, we get these problems, and we can't... And, and again... It's what do you do with them? So creating your own, and the biggest and the best example is, remember WEP, uh, was it Wireless Encryption Protocol? Mm -hmm. It was that, that hex code that you had to put in on the side of your router. It was that A, B, C, D, E, F, and the number 0 to 9. You're looking at the side of your router and put this in. Well, the people who created WEP thought it was really secure. They really thought about encryption and everything else. Who's going to break a hex key? Turns out it was easier than you thought, the way they, they implemented it. Whereas then we had to come back and change the standards to WPA, which caused a whole slew of devices, most notably the Nintendo DS, to break. So creating your own crypto is not something you want to do, no matter how smart you are, unless you're in there for the long haul and really going to time test it. Yeah, you. so, and there are plenty of really, really good encryption ciphers out there that are tried and true, they're tested, they've been around, you know, forever in terms of computers. So, you know, AES has been around. Let me let me get some real numbers for you. Um, AES, the Rheindahl cipher, has been around, the advanced encryption standard, has been around since first published in 1998. It's been hacked on, it's been torn apart, it's been stomped on, taken apart, everything you can imagine, put through its paces. And we're still using it today because everyone generally agrees this thing is really, really, really secure. Um, Blowfish, same way. It's been torn apart by the cryptographic community. It's been audited by just about everyone. And people agree this is really good security. It's a little slow, but it's really good security. With this, they just made something. They just said, hey, look, I think I made some good encryption. I'm going to put it in my production application and give it to people now without thorough testing, without getting it audited, without you know putting it through the standard paces that everyone else goes through. 
This is why there are legitimately really good ciphers out there that are a couple years old that people will not use. They back away from it because they say, hey, look, this looks great, and so far it's stood the test of time, but it needs to be bashed on for a couple more years before we start using it, just to be sure it's safe. With security, you don't mess around when it comes to encryption. It's too easy to get wrong. And these guys did. Well, so so I'm, I'm at the website, but one of the things we see is uh, where they store the messages. And they store the messages on a server. And the problem with that is that the, there's two keywords there, store and not in your control. And the, so, so I send Tom a message. It has to be routed through their server. You don't need to hack the server. You just need to take the server. The, the government, the NSA, the FBI can just walk in and say, we want the server, and they have all your messages. Yeah. And and I would believe that their that the NSA's math PhDs are slightly smarter than unfortunately the Telegram PhDs. If I had to make if I was a betting man, I, I would agree with you on that wager. I mean, they they I'm looking at their website. If you go to Telegram.org, they have a whole series. Why should we trust you? And you can go through it. But one of the things is they'll give you two hundred thousand dollars worth of bitcoins if you can decrypt their traffic. Well. I'm sure that maybe the average person can't or whatever else it is. But like I said, it's forget about that. Let's say the encryption is bulletproof. You, all you have to do is just walk in and steal the server. Right. And that's the problem. Uh, Threema does not do it. it. It leaves the server. It's local to the device. And we know the encryption is bulletproof. Let's say they got the server. I mean, they could have easily said that our server is using TrueCrypt. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but... It's using TrueCrypt, or it's using AES, or it's using Blowfish, or it's using this. And with that, you can say, oh, I understand that. I understand that these are the same things that's been tried and tested, and we've gone from there. Right. The, the way Threema does it, and the way LastPass does it, and the way companies that understand this and do it right, the way they take advantage of this, is they say, okay, you've got some messages that you want to send on your phone. When I hit the send button, my phone with the encryption key on my device. Keep that in mind. The encryption key never leaves this hardware unless I back it up and store it somewhere. It's only on this device. If this phone gets destroyed, the encryption key gets destroyed with it. Um, that's if you're building your app correctly. This encrypts the message on the phone, and then it sends it to Threema, and Threema receives this ball of encrypted data. It's static. They can't do anything with it. They just know it has to go to some other guy, to some other hex code, because they don't even use usernames in Threema. They use hex strings. So they can't even really tie it back to a human. And then they say, okay, uh, someone with this hex string got this message. And your phone goes, I'm that hex string, and it receives that message. And then it decrypts it using the other phone's key. It's the right way to do it. It's like PGP for email, but with messaging. It's the same principle, and it's the way you do it right. If Threema was compromised, if the NSA was running Threema service for them today, your messaging traffic would be safe because the messages get encrypted on the device. They don't get stored on the server in plain text. If the NSA took over Google tomorrow... All of your emails, Hangouts, traffic, Google Docs, calendars, everything would be publicly available to the NSA. This is why pre-internet encryption, pre-egress encryption is important. That's why we have trust no one systems like Spider Oak, like Threema, like LastPass. It's because that's the only type of security that stands up over time. And I just want to say, I mean... And I'm reading through the the FAQs. Look, the website is very well done. They really believe that they are secure, and and everything on it shows exactly that. I mean, they're not lying in the sense that they think they're secure. If you read the FAQs, there is a two hundred thousand dollar contest for anyone that can hack it, and they're asking why should we trust you? And they say everything we can do is open source except our encryption algorithm, which again is the problem, but. And then one of the other questions that caught my eye is, how do you make money? And they said, 
uh, we have a private donation. Well, it may be good for a million users, but what happens when you get this to the scale of WhatsApp, 450 million users? If you're guaranteeing no apps or no ads, how are you going to make money? I always question websites unless they're unless they're strictly nonprofit and strictly open source and ask the community for help. How are you going to be a private company and still make you have to you have to make money? Three ma charges a dollar ninety nine for the app, and when I've spoken to them, they they were hinting at charging yearly for this. How are you going to make money? Facebook has it because clearly you're using the overall Facebook and Hangout. Same with Google mm -hmm. and same with everything else. If they're storing it, the the messages have to go somewhere. So so be careful about what services you sign up for, what information you put onto the internet. Because even if a company claims that they're secure, do some research, do some legwork. And if you're concerned about security, if you're really concerned about security, you know, which we all are because of all this NSA stuff that's come out. You know, everyone's talking about, well, hey, I need a secure way to talk to people. I need a secure way to, you know, send letters to my grandma. How do I do that without the NSA reading my letters to my grandma? Then when a new app comes out, when a brand new app comes out and they say, oh, we're totally secure, really, we promise, guys. We even made our own cryptographic sequences and we're, all of our servers are under lock and key and armed guard and everything else. Wait a couple months until the massive fallout. Wait a couple months for hackers and white hats and everyone else to hack on this thing and try to break it. And chances are they will because most of these guys fail. And this app, at least in the security community, it probably won't ever be trusted for a lot of different reasons. But when you come out and you say something's secure and you haven't done your homework, you lose trust. So, cool. so stick to known good technologies. Stick to technologies recommended by us, recommended by Steve Gibson of Security Now. I mean, just take a look around Reddit or Hacker News, and there's plenty of opinions out there. Go find them. What I was going to say is, remember, you're moving from a service that never claimed to have privacy in WhatsApp. They never claimed to be, we're secure or anything like that. They just said, we're, we're sharing messages. And the reason you moved was presumably because Facebook bought it and, you're, and you trust or distrust Facebook to the point that you said, I don't like this. You either wanted to distance yourself from Facebook or you didn't trust them or whatever, and you said, well, why not be more secure? If, if you did any sort of research, Threema or Hemless, which is vaporware at this point, should have come up, and, and Tech Secure and a few others should have come up that you could have done your research. And we're telling you that Threema is really the way to go and to pony up to whatever it is, $1.99, $2.99, oh, it's, it's less so than $5. It's, it's less than $5. And, and it's beautifully done. It, it's really done well. So so we want to do that. Yeah, and in the, the show the notes... Best security I've ever seen in a messaging application. And in the show notes, we're going to post two articles that explains in more detail what we were trying to say with Telegram. Yeah. But I want to segue now, and this is a bad segue, into, uh, what is it, Project Optic? Optic Nerve. Good old Optic Nerve. I remember back in my day when uh, an Optic Nerve was not the name of a super secret, highly classified joint venture between the British version of the NSA, GCHQ, and the American NSA. I remember back in the day when I could be rest assured that my Yahoo webcam traffic wasn't being watched by some pimply-faced nerd in a government office building. Uh, unfortunately, those days have come to an end. So, Optic Nerve, it has come to light that between a joint venture between the, the British spy agencies and the American spy agencies uh, are watching any webcam traffic on Yahoo Messenger. And they do this, the, the Brits, what they did is there are big cables under the ocean that carry internet traffic. They actually went underwater and put taps on the, on the cables or, or to the, the place where they arrive on land and put taps on the cables to capture this traffic. And every 
five minutes, they snap an image that you're transmitting via webcam, and they store it. And anyone can look at it. And what they're using it for, the main thing they're using it for, is to build a facial recognition database. So when you're in the UK and you're getting watched by all those cameras everywhere, they know who you are. They could tie you to a Yahoo username, to a name, to a place, to your home. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's okay. I mean, it's a facial recognition database. They're out to catch bad guys. But, I mean, I usually don't do this, but think about the just creeptastic implications of someone watching you through your webcam. I mean, mine sees me every morning making a pot of coffee and walking around in my underwear. I don't think anyone really wants to see that, and I, I surely am not broadcasting on Yahoo Messenger when I do that, but, I mean, the implications are astounding. What are they watching? How many people have they caught doing nothing? How many kids are stored in these databases? I mean, it's... It's truly terrifying at this moment. This this is something that can get most of the populace mad. You know, if, if your son or daughter is talking to their friends on Yahoo Messenger over a webcam, yeah, that's being recorded. The NSA and GCHQ have got images of your kids chatting to their friends. And, you know, God forbid they're doing anything else. God forbid you have a, a teenage son or daughter doing what teenagers do. I mean, that's being stored somewhere. There's actually, in the paper that was released by The Guardian, they, uh, the NSA and GCHU have had a problem, a high problem with unwanted nudity, is what they classify it as. And they've got some algorithms in place to help filter that out, but it's not 100%. This is messed up. This is really messed up. Uh, if you want to take a local story that is actually... That actually happened with actual consequences. The story goes: This is now forever ago, four or five years ago, in Pennsylvania, in eastern Pennsylvania, a school district gave out MacBooks to the entire student body, and it was found out that the network administrators were randomly turning on webcams, and uh, not necessarily. They claim it wasn't spying, but they were spying. And it came to the, they basically shot themselves in the foot in the sense that they caught a girl doing something she shouldn't have been doing, and the parents said, uh, "How did you see this?" And they and they quickly backtracked and said, "Oh, we thought it was stolen," but they never questioned it or did anything else, and they eventually settled which was really sad. I, I really wish they went to court and fought these people to say, hey, what are you doing? You can't just install spyware on a computer and randomly turn it on. Yeah. And they, they, they did, and they were catching children doing what, I guess, like you said, doing what teenagers do. And, and why are they looking at it? Why do they have 56,000 images on their database? They clearly l weren't looking to see if it was stolen. Otherwise, they would have said something. But... Yeah. And that hit close to home. I mean, I'm, I'm not. You and I are both not too far from Eastern Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And it's and yeah, you know, we we both have have been in in the tech sector to some capacity, um, and it's it's really demoralizing as as security people and as just citizens of the world. I mean, we we use these things for communication. We use these things for for everything, computers and the internet in general, and we we put some trust in you know in system administrators, in network operators, in the technicians that build your computers, in the people that build messaging services, in our governments. We put a small amount of trust in our governments, and you know it's being thrown away left and right, and for what? I so so we can capture a facial recognition database so. Throw everything you know about, you know, about privacy and civil liberties out the window. How many people in Al Qaeda do you think use Yahoo Messenger? I don't think it's that many. Why are they collecting? Why are they building a database of people? I mean, what's the point? 
and try to think about all the things that they're capturing. It's if anything, if anything will get you, your your parents, your neighbors, you know, your your NSA fanboys angry, this is it. Uh, it's messaging services, and it's it can't be just Yahoo Messenger. You know, around the corner, there's something about Skype. You know, since Microsoft acquired them, or a little bit before, something about Google Messenger, something about uh, Ustream, or another uh, messaging or broadcast service that they're watching. I don't get how they could get away with this, and it's well, it's starting to make Congress really antsy. Well, we knew back in the day, and again before the Snowden leaks, we were told that Skype was 100% bulletproof. It was secure when it was at least owned by eBay. Then when Microsoft took it over, I mean, all of a sudden now, it's not secure. But like you said, terrorists are smart about these things. They're not... You have to be smarter than the terrorists, and they're pretty smart. To the Yahoo Messenger, nobody's going to be using... We all know this. We've been saying this every week. If you expect privacy, you can't use a commercial app, or you have to know about everything that went into it. So that's why we're looking for audits. That's why... That's why we just can't read blog posts about web, about articles. We need to actually do an audit about it. We need to really look at the security before we can say, yes, trust it. And nowhere did we ever say Yahoo Messenger is secure, so why would someone who's hiding things use it? Right. It's I, I Honestly, I didn't know anyone still used Yahoo Messenger. I, I thought it was dead. Um, I guess not to the NSA. So, ah, I just, uh, imagine the implications of this. Imagine there's a government database somewhere with pictures of everyone, regardless of race, creed, nationality. I mean, the NSA likes to say we're not targeting American citizens and we're not spying on our, our allied countries, but, you know, this is direct evidence to the contrary. These people are watching us, literally watching us. And, uh, I mean, what's to say that, you know, not only are messaging programs backdoored or being watched or the traffic being scarfed up from the Internet, who's to say everything else is due? Who is to say that, you know, a couple Windows updates ago you didn't get some backdoor into your webcam? We don't know. We simply don't know, and it. I don't want to be fear mongering, but there's a whole lot more coming out. I mean, Greenwald said, you know, this is this is one percent of what has been going on, and I, I'm terrified to learn more. I mean, well, yeah, and 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 every week, it seems like every Thursday morning, we get more and more news about what's going on, and it scares us more. It just scares us to the fact that we we didn't even think any of this was possible, and now it is. And that's what really – and the problem is is that half the people don't care. Well, they assume, okay, the government's watching us, and the other half of the people are so crazy on the other side that they're just going more and more into the bunker. And that's not necessarily what we want. We want to mesh these things, but we don't want to be afraid that our government is watching us for everything just in case we do something wrong. And Right. And and we, we shouldn't have to, to worry about, oh, is, the, is there a backdoor in this? The new conspiracy theory is that the go-to-fail last week was, a, was put in place by the NSA to capture uh, Apple traffic. Uh, and it I seems don't so perfect. I don't agree with it, but I've heard. I've heard. I'm again conspiracy it's, theorists. It's it's horrible because on one hand, yeah, it looks like just a mistake someone made in one of their code editors. They accidentally duplicated a line. We've all done it before. If you've written anything, any piece of code, you've had duplicate lines when you accidentally hit a key combination. It happens. But I can't say it's not a conspiracy theory because I mean, the past year we've we've been shown that. You know, all those people we called crazy, yet they were right. So, I mean, it could be, right? It, it could come out tomorrow. Greenwald could say, actually, yeah, that whole thing with go to fail, totally NSA conspiracy. Also, they faked the moon landing. And we would believe it. 
because he would have evidence to back it up in really badly made PowerPoint slides. It's ridiculous. So if you, it, the bottom line to all of this, when you encounter those people that say, the NSA is just out to get terrorists, or, yeah, but the NSA is watching everyone, tell them that everyone includes their kids. And if that doesn't get them riled up, if that doesn't make them scowl a little bit, and show them the article. Have them look at the slides themselves. It's really, really demoralizing to look at the evidence yourself. It's ridiculous. Yeah, d on that try, note, try to change some opinions. On that note, we need to end. We've gone over, so... It is that time. It is that time. So until next week, have stay safe. See you guys. Bye.